whenever news comes out about the trade talks, I've, I've uh, come to tweet out, it's Groundhog Day again, um, because we've seen this story over and over again. And I'm a bit baffled by the, the confidence which, with, with which this is all being greeted. Um, every piece of good news is being greeted by the market. There's a lot to work out here. And a month ago or more, this sounded like a done deal, at least the phase one. And now, you know, we're heading towards the end of the year, and it's not exactly clear whether we'll even see a ceasefire. And if there's no ceasefire, that then raises the question, at what point do both sides start to lose patience? I mean, one thing that's happening is that Congress is looking at passing this bill on Hong Kong that could further aggravate the relationship. And um, it might, you know, it, 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 it might interfere with the good news of, of a deal coming together. So there are a lot of things here that, that I don't think people who are just looking at the optimistic side of this are necessarily taking into account. All right. So, so there are so many variables. There's no doubt, Patrick. I mean, one of the things that many traders have been citing is this idea that as we incrementally make these record highs, it's not like with every headline there's a massive surge of 1,000 points in the Dow. It used to be maybe that way a year and a half, two years ago, kind of in the in the early stages of the presidency, but not anymore. Have the markets become more in tune? And just because stocks are at record highs, does it imply that there's a real, real optimism or is this just kind of like the path of least resistance for markets on these trade headlines? So as a long term investor, I actually think that stocks are the place that you want to be to the extent that you can afford to. And what I mean by that is that Safe harbors right now are very expensive. Um, they're a little bit less expensive than they were a few months ago, but they're still very expensive. And so for a lot of investors, especially if you have a long-term perspective, it may be worthwhile to just ride out some of these bumps along the way that, that could be coming up. But I am uh, a bit skeptical of some of the optimism that seemed to lift markets in the short term, in the sense that where is it coming from? Well, Optimism about trade talks, that may or may not be justified. If you look at earnings, earnings are flat for the S&P 500 quarter on quarter. They're down a little bit year on year in the third quarter. Uh, if you look at the economy, sure, it's a mixed bag. There are some good numbers that are holding up, like jobs and consumer spending. But there are also some things that are slowing down and continue to slow down. The Atlanta Fed now is projecting that the fourth quarter U.S. GDP growth will grow at 0.3%. Now, that, that number could get better. We're still in early days in terms of the data, but that's still not encouraging in, in, in a sense that uh, you would want to build higher valuations based on that. So in the short run, in the long run, it makes sense to be exposed to the market. In the short run, I think you've got to have some realistic expectations about what some of the bumps along the road might be ahead. Uh, Patrick, before we let you go, we, we also got news overnight that, that China has kind of lowered one of its benchmark interest rates, the first time it's done so in multiple years. Is there a sense right now that any kind of Chinese stimulus will be beneficial on that end to kind of prop up their economy and markets? And by virtue of that, will the rest of Asia benefit from that particular liquidity injection from the People's Bank of China? China is slowing. Um, and it's slowing in large part because of an over-reliance on credit. And so markets always welcome this news of Chinese stimulus, of more credit being poured in, but it actually doesn't ever solve anything. It actually adds to the, the problems. And so, uh, you know, but markets continue to welcome that. So the short-term response may well be positive. The longer-term effect will not necessarily be a game-changer in terms of getting China back on a positive track.